Welcome to Darth Hawk Gaming. I'm an independent developer myself, and I have some. I have a, I have a free day today, so I'm going to take some time off <clears throat> from projects I've been working on. I'm going to play Supreme Roller 2030 because I love making games and I also enjoy playing them. And uh, in my opinion, Supreme Roller 2030 is the best geopolitical sim, geopolitical simulation around today. Alright, so, twenty thirty Shattered World, and I'm going to um, go over how to, uh, to like an in-depth how to play the game. And uh, so we're going to go. So Laos is a <clears throat> communist country, and um, communist countries are stupid uh, in real life. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, but this is a um, <clears throat> a poor country. Uh, and uh, so let's, we're going to try to develop this country into a superpower. Uh, now, let's go over some game options, just explain some things. We have resources, if you want, you can set resources to depleted, dwindling, abundant, you know, that's, that would be interesting. Initial funds can change that. Uh, random events. Um, set that at low. Global AI stance. Okay. Uh, AF action cost speed advantage. Uh, if you want more of a challenge, uh, okay, schedule the game end. It can be none, or you know, try to set some goals, try to achieve them within a certain amount of time. Uh, a lot of victories uh, means, I guess, you know, you can have. Uh, I'm assuming it means you can take over the world with allies. I don't know. Start game without national debt. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> Critical international opinion. Yes, we will really enable that. Gameplay approval effects high. Nuclear weapon penalties high. Allowed nuclear weapon just use uh, units eliminated when region falls. So, if you conquer, so if a region's taken over, uh, if you don't have this selected, then that units of the region that was conquered will automatically ownership will pass to the region to the country that took them over. Uh, so again, without units, not doing that. Um, unit trades arrive instantly. This is um, in-game. This does not have... Now, there is a new thing uh, in this, this iteration of the Supreme Ruler series. Uh, there is a, a world market you can sell and buy units on the world market. This is not relating to that. Because um, before, you could trade with other countries in the game, and then it would move the units over. Uh, you, the mute would actually have to come over to your nation if you bought it from another country. Um, this gets rid of that to where if you buy it, it will be on your soil immediately. Um, so th this sort of solves, because sometimes there, there's an issue, like maybe you're selling units to a country, uh, and but, but that country doesn't have a, um, well, it doesn't have a, a land uh, transit and supply treaty with you. Well, then it, you can sell it to them, but then the unit's just going to be stuck there in your territory because it can't move. Um, and so that, that solves that issue. Um, so... <sighs> hmm. Let's go ahead and put that in there. That's probably, uh, this is less realistic, um, logistic wise, but anyway. Uh, not going to limit domestic approval effects. We're not going to limit uh, military approval effects. Law of government change, yes. Fog of war, yes. Enhanced spotting, enhanced ranges. Uh, so, 
<clears throat> each hex in this game is 16 kilometers, and so in having enhanced spot enhanced ranges is less realistic, but makes it easier to play the game. So it's otherwise it's like most units you can only detect something if there's you know the detection range is like one hex over. So anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, systems colonies keep military complexes. Um, okay, something about colonies I just want to say. All right, and for those of you who played Supreme Leader Ultimate, okay, you, you start taking over the world, and as you take over more countries, it's like your economy falls apart. Why? Well, because you're trying to maintain everything. Your economy is trying to maintain any, everything. Um, but you free up so much resources if you make a conquered nation a colony, because then they maintain their own buildings, and all the um, excess resources they produce, they don't trade on the market, they automatically send to you. So that makes it so much easier. Yeah, less, so colon, that if you're, any of you are wondering why I have colonies, that's why. Okay. Um, and this makes it so, um, and when you make a colony, so remember the ultimate, the default is obviously they, the, you own all the military bases in their territory. You maintain those, you can build units there. This can change that where you have a colony and they can build their own military units. Um, loyalty penalties to supply and line of sight. This is, uh, yeah, th this is a big one. This makes it um, more difficult to take over nations because when they do, um, it will take a much longer time to build military units and military bases in a conquered nation. It goes from like a unit that took 33 d days to like 108. Um, and it, it just it makes it much longer to build and you don't harvest as much resources. How do you negate this? How do, how do you uh, get around that? Well, you have to um, you have to have uh, your approval domestic approval rating at least 35 percent to start um, lessening the loyalty pen penalties. Uh, and then when your domestic approval rating is at 65%, then there are no loyalty penalties in conquered territory. Um, how do you improve the domestic approval rating? You spend money on, on social programs. That's how. You just throw money at them. Um, which can be really expensive if you're taking over lots of territory. So yeah, there's um, this game is very much an economic simulation. Um, there are pros and cons to each decision. You have to plan ahead and be like, okay, what do I want to do? Anyway, so electric cells, we can sell electricity, third party relation effects. So like, uh, there'll be events that will come up that will say this country, you click one, this country, this country did this. You can just do, okay, support or condemn. And if you support or condemn, um, you will, you know, either uh, increase or decrease relations with that country, but also affect how other countries feel about it. They will either, based on what you chose, they will like you or not like you um, more. Anyway, weather system, this does affect units in the game, will affect range, line of sight, reloading speed, damage. Um, so, yeah. All right, Battle of the Atlantic, nope. <clears throat> Just because this isn't World War II. Um, use road transport, yes. Road rail removal tool, yep. Uh, we don't have any mods. All right, here we go. All right, so we are Laos. We have, uh, some overlays here. Okay. Can show a map grid. Uh, <clears throat> now, do some, and so this is going to take several minutes for me to explain things, and it's not, starting the game with Supreme Ruler is not a difficult thing, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's just going to take me a lot of time because I'm going to be explaining things. Because <clears throat> this game, it looks complicated, um, it might seem complicated, but once you understand 
uh, how things relate to one another in the game, especially the resources, then you can get into having fun with the game, which is really fun. Uh, <clears throat> so, first, uh, me, I'm going to micromanage everything. In this game, uh, developers have made ministers for different parts, AI ministers for different parts of your government. So you can have, you know, you can have the, the AI control everything and just watch, or you can have it control most things and you control one thing, or you can do mix, mix and match, or, you know, and you can change it at different times, um, the control level. But I'm going to micromanage most everything. So first thing I'm going to do is lock the uh, computer out of everything I can lock it out of, and uh, I come down here, okay, now these are the social programs, uh, of, you know, what your, if you want to increase uh, domestic approval rating, okay, um, yeah, uh, that's how you do it, you spend money. Uh, now if you're a dictatorship or and coming in the communism, let's face it, it's just really in, in real life. You know, I get it. Communism's like, oh, everyone's going to share and be happy, and no one's going to own um, more than someone else. Is that how communism works out in real life? No. Comes works out in real life is there's a group or someone that's like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna manage who gets what, and <laughs> they end up being Stalin, or you know. Winnie the Pooh in China, and um, yeah, they're the elite, they're super rich, and everybody else is dirt poor. That's how communism works, just another another word for a dictatorship. So, but anyway, when you're in this type of government, uh, you have to keep your military happy because they will overthrow you. And there, you will see, from time to time maybe, I mean it's not going to be the same each playthrough, but from time to time, you might see uh, when you're playing, other countries will be overthrown by the military. Yeah. Uh, if you're a dictatorship or a communist, you need to keep your military happy. If you don't, they will kill you. So, uh, so um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, yes, let's come here. Uh, I'm going to not spend... Uh, education is important. It increases. You come here, hover over this. Oh, hover over domestic literacy, 66%. The higher that is, it will give you a boost to your research. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to change that right now. But every and infrastructure is important. And I'll get into that in a, a second. Right, everything else, most everything else, is like nope. Law enforcement, important. Everything else, nope. Nope. You want healthcare? Go get a job. Seriously, just go get a job. Um, <clears throat> so, increase the tax rate because I can. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, resources. Now, the resources are the. Um, this, if you can master the resources, how they work. That that's like um well yeah that's just that's just a prerequisite to being able to have fun with the game and understand what's going on. So we have uh, agriculture, rubber, timber, petroleum or oil, coal, metal ore, uranium, electricity, consumer goods, industry goods, military goods. Okay. So uh <clears throat> and then well let's see. Uh, so, obviously you need food to keep your people happy. Rubber is used in uh, produce, in helping to produce uh, consumer goods, not industry goods, but also military goods. Now, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, so in Supreme Ruler 2030, there's a little bit of change in resources. Now, every resource that uh, goes to produce consumer goods also goes to produce military goods. Uh, <clears throat> and you can make, so you can make a lot of money in the game by producing consumer goods, an excess of consumer goods, and selling them. Um, you, so, 
uh, do you want to use your resources to produce consumer goods or to produce military goods? Uh, and I would also say, if you want to have produce an excess of military goods, that's actually worth more than consumer goods. But if you sell them on the market, anybody can buy them, including a country that wants to take you over. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, uh, and you can do both. I mean, you can have an excess of both, and use what I do and have an excess of military goods. I don't sell it. I just talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> but to do both now requires a little bit more work, a little bit more effort uh, than Supreme Leather Ultimate. Uh, industry goods is what is used to build buildings. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, all right. Uh, oh, and military goods, uh, it also, it's still used to build military buildings and also to supply your military. And it's also used as ammo. Uh, and you can't, if you're not a military goods, you're not a ammo. And then it's a turkey shoot and you're the turkey. So, <clears throat> all right, so here are some controls. Okay, I'm not going to worry about everything. I'm just going to focus on these two right now. Um, and notice how I don't have any agriculture buildings. And somehow I'm getting agri I, I have none, absolutely none. Somehow I have agriculture coming in. Well, how, why is that? Well, each city is going to be producing a little bit, I understand, of uh, its own power and uh, its own uh, food. So, okay. And this this is a small country to begin with. Uh, so anyway, so this right here is for uh, setting purchases. Uh, if I, you know, so if I, since I, and I'm gonna lock the administer out of this. Like I said, I'm going to micromanage everything. You don't have to. This is just the way I've decided to play after playing for a while uh, with the other previous games. Um, so right here, buy is needed. So this is the market price, 953. This is what it would cost me to produce it. This is what I can sell it for. So yeah, that's a, you know, uh, I don't need to buy any. But if if I wanted to, now look because it's poor. Uh, you know, I might, and you can just click on it and then press the left to right arrow keys. Okay, and do it that way. I'd probably do something like that because it's poor. If it was uh, good or, or excellent or favorable, you know, the availability, I would try to keep it close, to, a little bit over the market price to make sure that I get some if I need it. But I have an excess right now, a little bit. Um, now selling. Okay, so this is, so I'm just going to focus on these two for now in this video for the resources and um, <clears throat> keep things simple to start off. Uh, and then, so right here, this is what we're selling, selling 100% of the surplus production. Okay, I'm just gonna go down to 98% uh, favorable, and we have right here. Um, and uh, this is what we're gonna sell it for, right here, okay? This is our price we're gonna sell it for. Uh, <clears throat> And you know, get as close as I can to that, but yeah. Hmm. Anyway, current markup 55% from uh, the production cost. But it's gonna be it's gonna be less than the market price. And usually you want it to be a little bit less than the market price, just a little bit. Um, anyway, so, <clears throat> any resource, that's how you do it. Uh, you want to buy it a little bit above. If it's poor, you want to try to buy it. You have, you're going to have to spend a bit more. Um, make sure you get it. Rubber is an important resource. Uh, <clears throat> now, one thing right here, like actual use, 20. Okay. Our stock, our reserves, we have 138 days, sustainability 138 days. So uh, <clears throat> this is how many days, like in our current use, uh, and then we'll be out of rubber. But I am going to be trading, so let's find something else that, okay, something we, hmm. yeah. 
all right, this, uh, consumer goods. We're producing this much, but our population demands this much. Now, consumer goods are great to have. They're not a necessity. Uh, and so if you're trying to give your population all the consumer goods they want, be careful. You might end up uh, ruining your economy doing that. Um, <clears throat> but look at here. Okay, we have reserves, 246 days, sustainability, 406. Okay. So reserves is how, many, how much it will last if you're not producing anything with your current stock level. Sustainability is how, how long this resource will last with your current stock level and your production level and you're not trading. So that's how long it will last, but we're gonna be trading. Well, obviously, no, actually we're not gonna be trading. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be buying any of those. Um, and I'm not gonna sell any right now, if it ever goes down to that, because I don't know the lesson what I already have. Uh, all right, so let's, I'm not gonna sell a rebel when I get it either. to buy any <clears throat> and I don't need to put this all the way down not to buy it I mean if I have a surplus it's not going to be buying any. I just do that just to make sure <laughs> okay uh, like you know like I said I'm a micromanaging dictator of this game so Oriole we really eventually need that uh, the market availability is excellent so we don't need to be going spending lots of money this should be fine right now. Uh, oh, and if I ever get any, well, I really want to sell it. It's going to be a while. Anyway, I'll just leave it like that. But coal, we do need coal. It's going to be a while before we need any, though. Before we need to buy any. Should be anyway. Uh, This is important, uh, and let's see. I really don't need to change just because I'm, I'm not producing any right now in the cells, so just for the metal war. Uh, I'm not going to sell any of that. Um, I don't need any of that right now, so electricity. Electricity does not, from what I understand, it doesn't seem to stock over. It doesn't seem to, to keep it. Uh, so if you have an excess, just go ahead and sell it. <clears throat> Consumer goods, yep. Industrial goods, I'm not selling that. Uh, if we need some, I will get some. But yeah, because sometimes like the AI will do, but to make sure that you get some, it will have it in, in the same price. And then the chorus nations will sell it to you because you're willing to pay a lot more for it. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, what's our goods? Nope. Now look at, look at those consumer goods. Uh, what, about 5,000 difference in price? Um, about 15,000? <laughs> so yeah, you can make um, lots of money selling military goods. Just, you know, be careful. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> okay, so we got that squared away. Uh, and uh, so, in this game, uh, so we do have power. We have some power buildings. Uh, let's see. Well, like this. And this is a new feature they've added. Uh, you can, because before you had to search visually. Okay. Hydropower. So this produces power. So you don't need to produce. You don't need to connect power buildings to anything. Uh, when you build a power building it, or any resource, it just puts it in your general resource pool. 
doesn't need to be connected to anything except the only reason it's connected to a um, industrial complex is if you build a resource building out in the middle of nowhere, it's going to also build an industrial complex to connect to unless it's already unless you build it on a city. Okay. Um, same for military uh, bases. You build them, it will build a well, that's a city, uh, a military complex that you can connect them to if you build them out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, <clears throat> some of them you have to build attached to a military complex, other ones you can put in the city. All right, so let's do a little bit of cleaning up, okay? Now, so I, I am not so sufficient in a lot of resources. Uh, some I am, uh, and we really need to, to get, um, get things going. But we're gonna do some cleanup. Let, let's look at our, um, oh, we're gonna set this. Uh, what this does is this will give uh, the AI control over your units and it will actually move them around for defensive purposes and when there's a war, you know, you've put the full, it will actually go and attack. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna micromanage manage everything. Uh, this is reserve personnel. This is um, the people that are active. Uh, so garrison staff, all right. Right now we have one garrison. It's 540 personnel per garrison. And they now do less damage than, uh, than uh, Supreme Ruler Ultimate. Supreme Ruler Ultimate, you could totally uh, garrison your cities and that would, in some cases, that would be enough of a deterrent to keep them from being taken over. Uh, well, it depends on how much units were thrown at you, but, uh, but now in this game, no. In this game, uh, I could send the militia. Let's see. I could send. I could build militia. And they would. They'd be enough to take a city now that's garrisoned. Yeah. So now garrisons, they take up a lot of personnel. And they are. Um, they're not. They're, they're basically just a holding action, a brief holding action, so you can get units over there. And uh, so. With my amount of personnel I have right now as your personnel, it's not worth it for me to have garrisons. Um, it's really not at, at this point in time. Uh, so, but now let's um, reserve units. I can click on, this is all, it will show all the reserve units. Just the ground reserve units, the air reserve units, uh, Navy units, missile units if I have any. So, all right, what I'm gonna do, and you notice this is scrunched up. Okay, I'm playing at a lower resolution right now, uh, <clears throat> because it's easy for me to see. <laughs> Low resolution on a big screen. Okay, uh, so this I'm playing at a resolution that's usually a game's not usually played out, so that's why this is scratched up. But I can still see it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, hover over here. Yep. So I am now going to sell some units on the market. Uh, I don't. Community transport. Now I can come over here and yeah, we'll pour one style plane. Anyway, I come over here and do that. Sell for 37 million. Oh, we haven't started. Yeah, let me do it. Yeah, just did it. Or I can come to right here, uh, push, purchase units from the market or sell them. Uh, transport. There we go. Just all of them. I don't need any transport. So, 811 million. Yep. Jump up to 1.31 billion. So, we have a diplomatic offer from Arizona. Uh, I'm offered by Arizona. Uh, 90 times daily, 550,000. And they want 9 times daily, 1,000. Timber, I think. So they're offering $49 million in return for $30 million worth of timber. That's what that is. Uh, yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is since I don't have a lot of... Now, I have, I have, um, I have an air base. Okay. And I want to see, do I have any airfields? I do. And I really don't need them right now. And that's so why I'm going to scrap them. Uh, three airfields. Three, that's all I have. It, no, it's, it's not the airbase. The airbase is something else right here. I'm not going to scrap that. Um, 
But I don't need them. And what it will do is it, it will, um, uh, when you scrap a building, like here in economy, you actually have a population, okay? And you have, unemploy have my unemployment is less than 3%. When you get 3% unemployment, there's a possibility when you build buildings, they're not going to be staffed. So, uh, plus, I'm also, um, every building takes up a certain amount of power. And when I scrap a building, I also get some industrial goods back. Not a whole lot. Definitely not what it took to build them, but I get some back. So I'll, I'll increase my stock power a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Uh, now I have industrial goods, and I need to use this to build wisely. So what do I need? Okay. Uh, now let's look at the resources here. Resources, agriculture. This is where I can grow crops, and the redder it is, the redder it is, the the more the resources there. And now, <clears throat> so right here would be a good option. And we look at the supply levels at thirty five percent, which isn't good, really. Um, and it's tied to this. Okay, uh, not specifically. I mean, this is how much I'm spending on. Um, well, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, but this is how much uh, my infrastructure is funded uh, like total. And you want to get this up to 100%, okay? It will grow over time. Uh, it doesn't apply to instantly. Uh, but this, this represents uh, how, you know, your, how your road infrastructure is at moving supplies around, getting things where it needs to be, um, so it's you know, keeping the roads and transportation systems fully funded. Uh, operating <clears throat> so it will go up now if I build something here uh, like agriculture at uh, the supply rate of 35 percent uh, it just happens that this is equal to that right now this um, this is how how fully funded our infrastructure is this right here is how much supply is getting to that hex uh, which, anyway, it's usually not the same number. Um, over here, the supply, 27, okay? But then over here, 25. So it's, let me come over here. Okay, so the closer you are to your capital, the higher the supply, except why is this supply over here on this lonely road higher than here? Well, because it's connected to a road. So, I mean, going through the jungle, what is this? Uh, jungle, terrain, trees. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna, there's no road there, so I mean, yeah, it's, you have a little bit of supply, but not a lot. Um, <clears throat> so things connected to a road uh, or a rail system are gonna have a higher supply, even if they're farther away from the capital than a plot of land out in the middle of nowhere that's closer to the capital. Uh, <clears throat> so, So agriculture is something that's cheap to build, and uh, we, we have a little bit of excess of it. So let's get a little bit more excess of it. So agriculture. So we come here. It's going to cost $24.17 million to build, and 60 days. It's going to take 1,450 industry goods. Annual maintenance is $1 million. Max possible output is six ninety one. dollars um, So... And so I'm going to, now there's nothing there, so it's going to also build an industrial facility as well when I put this down. Okay. Oh, okay, so how, that's 1,450. Okay, yeah, we have more than enough to, to build agriculture there. But notice I can't build agriculture in places where there's not a, you know, with the resource won't allow me to build it. I have to build it here. Well, I can build it here, but that wouldn't be a good idea. Here would be the best choice for the moment. So I um, left clicking down and right clicking to, to stop doing it. Uh, anyway, um, and it gives you messages. Okay. All right, and now you're going to see there's. Hmm, 82 days. You're like, well, wait a minute. It said 60 days. Well, what's affecting that? The supply level. 
our supply level is horrible right now, so that's affecting it. It's like, you know, we can't get all the supplies to build it. It's like, because of the supply level, it's um, simulating the fact that we can't get all the construction supplies to the area we need to right now. So, <clears throat> now in, um, but as we, as we uh, increase the uh, supply level, that will change. Now, this would be over like 200 days. Uh, to build agriculture, if we, if like if this was in territory, we just taken over, um, because <laughs> people aren't loyal to you, and they're they're not going to happily go along with your plans of world domination. So, um, and like I said, to fix that, you need to get domestic approval rating up to 60 or above to negate all loyalty penalties. All right, uh, now. We don't have any industrial, I mean, well, we have a little, producing a little, but anyway, so we also need industrial goods. Let's go ahead and build uh, industrial good. Let's not build uh, the tiny ones. Let's build this one. Yeah, yeah. This is, um, oh, yeah, 1.07 billion. Uh, we have one point. So, hmm. what about consumer? All right, a consumer facility. Uh, we can actually do this. It's cheap. I mean, we could do the industrial facility, but it would be close. Um, so let's build this. It's it's. Uh, a little bit less than half of the industrial facility and it will allow us to get money okay max possible output 790 no don't do that um, if you change anything okay uh, we're already producing almost half and so we, with, once we finish that we'll get some extra money in and then we can build an industrial facility after that have a shortage yeah because our unemployment is at 2.5 well that will change Industrial will get consumers right there uh, because we have a large population there, over one million people, and uh, we have you know a spot to build it. You can put six buildings on a hex. This would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six buildings on a hex, not counting the center piece, whether it's military complex, industrial complex, or a city or a town. <clears throat> and population matters, uh, like we have immigration, emigration, emigration is people leaving, births and deaths, uh, uh, if you're a poor country and you want to help encourage people to come, but you don't want to fund all the social programs, uh, at least getting education up as high as you can will help, um, especially if your next to neighbors who don't have a high literacy rate, then they'll want to move to your country. So that, that will help. Uh, okay. So now it's just like playing the waiting game. <laughs> and I'm going to manage these resources. Oh, see, it's, and it's going to fluctuate up and down. first several turns, or turns, first several months. <laughs> this is real time. Uh, uh, Pakistan has declared war in West India. Hmm. So if we were to come over here, Pakistan, Wait, where's West India? I mean, you'd think it would be in the West. Uh, oh, well, okay. 
I just thought it would be western half. I guess technically this is closer to the west over here. <laughs> um, oh, I haven't done any research. All right, researching. So, <clears throat> research may seem like a daunting task. Um, when you look at that, okay, there are different, just there are different, you know, warfare, transportation, science, technology, medical society, and then you have ground research, air research, naval research, missile research. Now, if you think you can ever research every single unit in the game, you're insane. Um, you're insane, okay? There's not enough time in the real, real world to do that. <laughs> this is a very um, expansive tech tree. Uh, you go from modern era clear up to future tech where you can have mechs roaming around causing trouble. Um, it takes a while to get there. Um, and if you want to spend all your time researching every single unit, you're never going to get there. <laughs> so, um, let's see, what do I want to build? See, and you have stuff like this, like amphibious, amphibious designs, uh, which will help you go across water. Amphibious um, vehicles can just go right across water. So they're not going to go the same speed as they do across land, but otherwise you would need a bridging unit to get normal units across. Amphibious units can also, uh, but they, well, they have to leave from a port, but when they do, they, they don't have to land back at a port. They can land anywhere. So that's the whole point. So you can you know, do amphibious assaults that way. Anti-ship missiles, so I can build missiles uh, that specifically target naval ships. Uh, heat warheads like this will make heart attack uh, up to plus 25% more than what it already is for a unit. Anyway, well, for all units, and once you research this. Uh, Let's look at units. Okay. Uh, okay. Like this right here. Okay. And we can double click it. <clears throat> uh, it shows us the weight. Like that matters if you want to load it into a transport. Okay, that's how much cargo space it's going to take up. So this is a hard target. So this is infantry, but it's a hard target. Okay, because it's armored. Uh, it travels wheel. Uh, it's amphibious, okay? Uh, and NBC stands for Nuclear Biological Chemical, uh, which means these weapons will have less effect on it than otherwise. And it's capable of capturing, I think, I've never done it yet, but I think in this game you can capture enemy units if they run out of ammo. You can circle them anyway, surround them and capture them. So this right here is the strength, that's the health. This is the fuel uh, for traveling. It also takes it directly from your oil reserves. All the fuel for your units come directly from your oil reserves. You can research technology called uh, fuel cells, which will limit how, you know, which will make it so you don't need as much oil, which I highly recommend, especially if you have a huge military. Uh, unless you just have a bunch of infantry traveling on foot, they don't use fuel, but it takes a while for them to get anywhere. Supplies, okay, this is for capturing territory when you go into enemy territory and also your ammo for the unit. Um, this comes directly from your military goods, okay? So if you have a hundred of these, um, that's going to take 4,700 military goods to arm them all for just firing 25 times. Combat time is how many times it can fire before it's out of ammo. It fires 25 times, and then it needs to be reloaded. Okay. And if you're in your level of supply, it will do that automatically. Um, for instance, if I'm over here, the supply level right here is 13%, uh, not good, but it will still reload. If, I, if I'm out of ammo, it will reload here, but it won't reload as fast as if I was over here at 30%, which is still not the best. But anyway, um, so... <clears throat> All right, uh, this can see 29 kilometers, so almost two hexes, spotty. Uh, so fortification attack, uh, if soft attack, hard attack, surface attack. This is for attacking fortifications or cities. 
Uh, this is a soft attack. It's attacking infantry units. Hard attack is attacking um, armored units like this. This is an infantry unit, but it's armored, so it has armor. Um, this would be like attacking something that, like a jeep or like foot infantry. Okay, it goes one kilometer away, does eight damage. One kilometer away does six damage. It can like, shoot at ships that are coming by the coastline. Uh, five kilometers away, it does one damage. Um, close defense. This is how much defense it does when you're in close combat, like cities, uh, forest, mountainous terrain, jungles, stuff like that. Um, this is what it uses for defense usually against any ground unit firing at seven. So if you try to take this into a city and take on infantry, your defense is going to go from being seven to five. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and air defense uh, from air units firing at it and indirect defense which is defense from splash damage uh, and here is it can close air attack so they're close air attack mid air attack high air attack so this is like for helicopters this icon is like so for helicopters fly this is for um you know mid air attack like jet fighters fly uh, also jet fighters will go from mid air attack to close air attack when they come in to attack ground units unless they have missiles and they just fire missiles uh, High air attack is like um, the strategic bombers. So notice this can take on any air unit that's close air. It can take them on. Five kilometers away does one damage, but flies higher than that. It can't. It can't hit them. Um, close attack. So when you go to close attack, um, close range, like mountainous city, um, jungle, something like that. Now, and I'm on fighting infantry now, instead of doing 8 damage to infantry, I'm going to do 6. Because, I mean, so, you want to pay attention to how you use the units. This, um, and, uh, initiative 4, okay, uh, 80 kilometers, this is the top speed, this is how fast, far it can travel on a full tank. Okay, 500 kilometers. So, we can come here, this measuring tool right here, and let's just start right here, and we can see, alright, 500 kilometers, how far is that? Alright. So, we could go up to there. Supposedly, <laughs> a single tank of gas, which isn't going to happen because you use up more fuel when you when you travel through uh, dense, when you travel through, when you're not traveling on a road. Um, you use up the least amount of fuel when you're on tracks. Uh, use it the most when you're going over open country, uh, like, uh, and if it's covered in terrain, like, uh, foliage, like trees or jungle. Jungle uses up the most fuel to get through. It's insane. It's ins sanity. It's insane. It takes up a whole lot of fuel. Uh, just to go a few, um, like, just to go four tiles in jungle would pretty much use up all the fuel of that unit. That, yeah. Um, and then it has to be refueled, and it will take it, and if you're in a hex where you have supply, it will, you know, it will start putting fuel back in automatically. You don't have to control it. You just have to be on a hex where you have a supply. Um, so, let's see, something like a tank here. Let's look at this. So tanks, you notice it does more damage, uh, and this is... Um, T-54, so it's World War, a little bit after World War, anyway, so it's around that area, World War II, um, Cold War era. Notice, yeah, it will do more damage, and then notice, and it has good defense, but notice when you put a tank there in a close quarters, like a city, uh, yeah, its attack and defense go down. Um, and let's, um, uh, let's look at this. Militia. Um, this unit's going to have an advantage fighting the tank. Okay. In a city. Um, so, <clears throat> so, 
So tanks and or armored units that are hard targets are good against going in you know, open country and shooting stuff. And when you want to take a city, use infantry. Uh, so, yeah, I mean it, it's it's like um, you know in real life you have a tank going down the street of a city that can't maneuver and you don't know when someone's going to pop their head out of a building and send an RPG your way so yeah uh, uh, but if you, you know, if you're tanks and you meet infantry in the open field yeah the infantry are going to get slaughtered because you're free to maneuver and just got them down <clears throat> um All right, so that is it for this video. Uh, so this this introduction video uh, explained a whole lot. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Going to be building this consumer goods and get some money, and then build uh, the industrial goods center. So we're going to start building industrial goods. Uh, I'd be self sufficient with that, and go from there. So thank you for watching this video. Um, and the next video is about this. I'll try to keep it around 45 minutes. But yeah, so Supreme Ruler 23 is a great game. It has a lot of things going on. Uh, there's, there's so much control you can do, so much detail has been put into it. Um, I highly recommend this game. You can also do like shadow ops spying, and spying has been uh, enhanced. You can do assassination missions, you can do cyber attacks. You can do things to mess around with the internal politics of other nations and perhaps cause the conflicts between two rivals um, who would otherwise might become allies against you. Anyway, there's there's so much more to this than just having enough resources, building units, and taking over the world. There's so much more to it. Um, so, thank you for watching this video, and join me for the next one.